Welcome to this epic disaster. Rick does not follow instructions quite well. I asked him to please stop with the papers and I would start the episode. And as you can hear, he does not follow directions. It's like ASMR. No, it's bad ASMR. People are going to be like, ah, what the hell is that in my yeah. ears? So there's like this one ASMR girl that, um, 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 if you're into ASMR, you know, uh, she goes by the name of Latte ASMR. Now, if you, You've mentioned her several times on this show. With her. She's uh, Korean and uh, young enough to be my daughter, so my love is not sexual. Thank um, you for that. But she did this. She did this ASMR thing. So she does these like really weird kind of concepts, inter- quirky concepts, and she does it. It's funny, and I think she's just trying to be funny, which is funny. Okay. Um, but she do- she does this um, concept of uh, she has a hibernation clinic, and a creature who is supposed to be hibernating, who is having trouble hibernating, comes to the clinic to get some help. So she goes That's and helps. That's me. No. She, well, she kind of goes through this whole thing. And so basically it's kind of like they can't sleep, so she's going to help it sleep. That's me. So that's the whole thing about, you know, the ASMR to, to teach the person to relax so the person can I might like, watch that one. So good. You, I don't. If you don't like ASMR, you won't like it because it's Does so... Does she do the crinkly and the... It's just things. It, I mean, I can't know. I don't know how to explain it. She's. It's just ASMR. So, um, but it's almost two hours long. Okay, I can't do that. It's so good. I've listened to it. Like there have been a couple nights when I've listened to it twice. <laughs> Four hours. I just put. Well, I fall asleep. You put it on, and then ten minutes, I'm out. And then, it, like, I wake up in the middle of the night, and she's still talking in my head. <laughs> oh my god! It just goes, and then. I mean, it is so freaking relaxing. I love it. All right. So you know what relaxes me? Uh, what? A beer. A, a strong alcoholic beverage. Some sort of alcohol. Knocks you out. Actually, it doesn't. Do you know that alcohol is a cardiac irritant? Okay. And if you suffer from any sort of uh, heart palpitations or high blood pressure, mm-hmm. it's actually best not to drink prior to going to bed. Oh, okay. Because it will actually wake you up in the middle of the night. So so you think that alcohol puts you to sleep because mm-hmm. it relaxes you, yeah. right? And that's true. But once those effects wear off, the other effects of the cardiac irritants kick in, and then you wake up in the middle of the night, and then you can't go back to sleep. One of the more irritating things for me about getting older is that alcohol has started putting me to sleep. So, uh, like, used it used to, to be fun to drink. I mean, well, I mean, it's always kind of been relaxing, I suppose. But I mean, really, it's like a sedative. It's like yeah. as soon as I drink it, I'm out. I just it it will destroy my parties because it's just like all I want to do is just go take a nap. Well, I mean, half the time I come over here and you've had gin, you can't even get half your clothes off. And why am I to, taking my clothes off while you're here? Because you drink gin. And not when you while, drink gin, you take your clothes off. Not while you're here, I don't. Uh, no, I've because you talked, fall asleep. I haven't taken my clothes off in front of you in 10 years or more. It's at, at least that long. All right, give me that. Tell, we, tell, sorry. The, tell the fine friends at home what we're having. Today, we are drinking... And a, keeping our clothes on. And keeping our clothes on. We are drinking America's oldest brewery, Yingling. Huh? It's their Oktoberfest seasonal beer for this 2021 yes. season. It says it's a classic... Marzen style. It's the M A R Z E N, but it's got the little two dots over the Marzen? A. Marzen? And I, d- I don't know Marzen. how to pronounce that. And it's not on our periodic table of no. beers. Um, but it's Oktoberfest. I'm. It's, it's kind of like celebrate. Oh, look at that golden. It's very golden. Celebrating the uh, the season quickly. It's the exact same color as the label, isn't that it's interesting? It's almost pumpkin. fall, people. It's like a pumpkin. It's almost fall. Now, if you don't know Youngling, which you should, because apparently they're Whoa, America's. Hello. This see this time it's your turn to spill beer. I didn't really, I didn't really <laughs> spill it. I yes, mispoured you did. it. No, you spilled. I was pouring you in my glass. Your beer. You spilled your beer all over the table. I was pouring it in my glass, and my glass slipped out, and it would poured you, it. Would you like some paper towels? Yes, we will need. I uh, have some here for some you. Paper towels, thank you. It's your turn to clean the Look, table. Look, it's like a moth. It made like a moth. It's Mothman. Oh, it's, like a, it's the Mothman prophecies. Out of the beer there. Anyways, <laughs> Youngling is, out, and then you go and do it again. Oh, you didn't. Okay, no. We're spilling a lot more beer as we get older, I think. We don't have the... Uh, uh, I think for like a couple of years on the show, we never spilled a single beer. You always said we were going to, but we never did. And now we do it all the time. Almost every week, one of us is spilling a beer. No, it's been the last two weeks. 
Yeah. Out of 200 shows almost, I don't think that's every see every show. That's like two shows. Okay. I'm sniff I was did sniffing sniff the beer. It? Did you have it? it? Did you I have it? Sniff the beer. I just <laughs> Did you tell did you say everything it is? Did you talk about it? I was too busy That's me huffing. Up my that's me huffing. Yes, I talked about it. Okay, so we're ready to drink, drink it, it now. All right, here we go. Do it. Um, it doesn't have a large head on it. It's just kind of light. It's very pumpkiny. That's what they said. So here we go. Gonna drink it. Do it. All right, you tell us what you think. I'm gonna drink. You were supposed to be telling us what you think while I drank. You didn't do it. You know what? There's. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to talk about it right now. All right. So here's what I'm going to say, because I was going to talk about this. All right. Do it. I, so what was it? Two weeks? No, last week we did the bloody beer. Yeah. And we bought two, we bought a, a <laughs> six pack of Miller Lite. Yes, we did. We each had one and with they're, the blood. And they're, they're pint size, by the way. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And, um, and then we put the rest in the fridge. I've, I've drank all of those. I know. <laughs> I in have, a week in one week which is so rare for me usually i drink two a week which is on this show and i i can't believe how much i've missed regular beer because we've been <laughs> drinking just you know we had this conversation a couple weeks ago and i had a regular beer it's like we i it's been so nice just to have a regular nasty regular beer watery totally beer american light beer and not the craft beer but what's funny is that you will occasionally, you're working at your studio, mm -hmm. and you'll send me a text, and it's a picture of a beer that we've done on the show in the past that we had leftovers of. That I took. That you took over there with and you. And I'm having it. And you're drinking it, and you're like, I don't remember what I rated this, but this is really good. Yeah. And, or the opposite. Or Sometimes the opposite. Sometimes I rated it really good, and I don't like it anymore. And you're like, I don't know what I rated this, but this is crap. Yeah. And that's fine. But what's funny is that here you are just sucking down the light beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like well, nobody's here's I, business. Here's why I mentioned that is because I just, I mean, I just had finished one off before we came up here. Yep. I finished off the light beer and then I we're having this. Yes. So. And now, now tell me what the difference is for you. This is actually weaker than the light beer. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's I not. just had that in my mouth. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> it's, it's. It, it, it is not a strong um, craft beer. It's it's very light. Well, it's not a craft beer. It's a youngling. I know. But that's I, not that's a craft what I'm beer. Saying. It doesn't have a really strong flavor. It doesn't have a thick flavor. And actually, I think it might be slightly weaker than the light beer. I'm going to disagree with you on a lot of levels. Okay. But that so we're, you. we're allowed to disagree. Uh, all right. So um, let's move on. And now I want to do a little preview. Oh, I wait, want to do a little hold up. Hold up. Just so people who are just listening, mm -hmm. the reason we're drinking a beer is because we do a live beer review. It's a live beer review. Every week. Yeah. And we, we didn't will just drink like it. for the hell of it. No, it's not just for the we, It might be yeah. the first time we ever didn't say that we're having the live beer review. But we drink a lot. We drink a, we open up a beer we never had before. We drink it. We'll tell you what we think. We give it a rating at the end of the show. Uh but something else we're going to do. Please. Uh this is a little preview. We're not gonna do it right now. Oh. Uh, you brought in some vegetarian beef jerky. Now I've tried several and kinds. They won't put beef on it. Just it's vegan jerky. This is actually vegan jerky. Oh. Uh, obviously, the name of the brand is mm. Unisoy. Okay. So I'm assuming it's soy based. It's wholesome wonders. Wholesome and mm. wonderful. Yeah. And yes, it is soy based. It's got some soy I'm in look it. Look at that's like the can second. The, can I see the ingredients? Yes, please. I want to look at really quick. Wow, there's a lot of ingredients. Lots of um, ingredients. Hold on. I'm just, I want to do a quick little thing in looking. Now, I tell you, I've tried, oh, while he's looking, I have tried several different jerkies because jerky used to be my absolute, like one of my favorite mm -hmm. snacks. Me too. Like Loved I would it. have it in the car, mm -hmm. you know, driving down the road and just be like, oh, jerky, you know, and, and once I went uh, vegetarian, that's not a thing anymore for me. So I've tried some different uh, vegan and vegetarian jerkies and some of them, they just mm -hmm. turn out, they're soft, kind of mushy, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for that chew. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for that texture. Mm -hmm. And I never got it out of any jerky. And then I found this website. Uh, I think it's online. It's called, well, of course it's online, but it's called Vegan Essentials. Okay. 
and they have several different types of jerky and i thought well this one is a little spendy but i'm gonna go ahead and try it because it gets a really good rating so i bought it and i bought it with a couple of other options and you know just one bag and it came in and i tried it and i was like holy shit now mind you i am soy sensitive yeah so if i eat a whole bag of this which i could easily do um that's I'm, redundant by I'm, the way. I'm gonna be hurting soy sensitive actually means i am sensitive yeah yeah in another language <laughs> yeah bite me okay okay um i'd rather bite the jerky i'm not speaking spanish right i now. would rather bite the jerky than the jerk so let's um you want to try um, it now huh you want to try it now uh no Okay. Let's let's play a little. Would you rather? Would you rather would you play rather? a game or try jerky? Because it's like a teaser. <laughs> I want everybody to like. Dang it! I wanted them to eat that jerky. I will tell you though. I'm gonna have to stick. I don't know. And see I'm, I'm gonna like. save. I'm gonna save my opinion of this jerky for later. Why? Because I did. Well, okay. So I told you I bought all these different options, right? Mm-hmm. And then like I got I bought this one and I tried it, and then I bought like six more bags of this. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> Which means I clearly like. <laughs> That's fine. You don't have to save your opinion. You dropping? I'm blue, dropping. Blue. Oh, red. It's red. Red is uh, pain, fear, discomfort. Would you rather always almost have to sneeze? Oh, no. Or hit your funny bone every 15 minutes? Oh, no. Neither of those are good. No. Those are both very bad. You got to choose one. I think. Which would you rather do? I think I'd rather always have to sneeze. Oh, that would be so awful. Because then I just always look like this. <gasps> <laughs> With that face, you know, where you're like, <gasps> and everybody goes, bless you, before you even sneeze? Mm-hmm. What is that about? I used to do, uh, I can't do it anymore, Donald Duck sneezing when I was in high school. Try it, try it real I quick. don't think try I can. It. Just try it. I'll go, because I, I can't. I can't do it. I've lowered. You can't even do Donald Duck anymore. <laughs> There you go. I but you, but it was you the did whole build up. on yourself a little yeah, bit. The whole um, build up was the, you'd go, I can't do it. You, and yeah. Then I can't do it at all. That's, I, just that's watching very... you grab your cheek and do that. I don't yeah. understand how you do that. Like my cheeks don't do that. Oh, they don't? No. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to uh, make now fun I feel of the offended. cheek impaired. I'm cheek impaired. All right. People are like, I, I see, like, even in the movie Princess Bride, mm-hmm. where, uh, oh, God, what was his name? Peter. Wallace Shawn. Peter, no, oh. the uh, the guy who played Columbo. Peter Falk? Peter Falk comes in. Mm-hmm. He's the grandpa. He's reading the story, sure. right? Mm-hmm. So he goes in to, to squeeze Kevin, um, what's his name? The kid. Fred. Yes, Fred Savage. He goes in to squeeze his cheek, mm-hmm. and, like, his cheek actually comes out Uh-oh. and, like, does one of those oh yeah my cheeks are so solid like you can't do that to my mm. cheek it hurts just to touch it like that you are cheek impaired i am cheek impaired all right here we go i'm it's gonna drop dropping go it's yellow <laughs> like i was pooping there for a it second. was you were like straining <laughs> It was weird. Anyways. Uh, we haven't done a yellow in a while. Yellow stands for random. Okay. So this is just a totally random question. All right. Would you rather mm-hmm. find out on your wedding night that your spouse has a wooden leg? That's all right. Or that they have herpes? <laughs> I'm going with the leg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's Thank nothing you. wrong with having herpes. Well, let's put it this way. I'm not going to wake up the next day with a wooden leg. No, you're not. <laughs> But you might wake up the next day with a sexually transmitted disease. So, um, and I've told this, I'm sure, on the podcast before. So there's a story about my ancestors who came to America. So um, the, um, so Elizabeth Farrell was like my, I think, sixth great grandmother. Wow. And she wanted to come to America. Yeah. Where from? uh, Ireland. Okay. Uh, Dublin and she uh, Kilkenny Dublin one of the two I can't remember I think she came from Dublin but anyway so she wanted to come here and her uh, father was a a ship's captain Uh and her brothers he said they can come but they she he wouldn't let her come here oh that's not fair no because she was a girl yeah and he was like this is you know and that was like what 17 something something like that and so her brothers uh, said you can come we will hide you (gasps) 
on the ship. And this is your ancestor? Yes, my sixth great grandmother. And so so they did. Now, and the the legend is that he, her father, my I guess my grand seventh. That would be your seventh, yeah. Had a wooden leg. Wow. And so on the ship, whenever she heard the wooden leg, bunk, 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 yep. they would quickly hide her <laughs> so he wouldn't know. So the wooden leg gave him away. Okay. So I have a very not as fun story about uh, that. that A wooden leg? Well, what sounds like a wooden leg. Okay. My poor cat mm-hmm. has a hyperextended wrist Uh-oh. on one of her front legs. Okay. Now, she's ex- she's extremely elderly. Mm-hmm. She's about to turn, well, she'll be 18 in February. Okay. So that puts her well over 100 years old in mm-hmm. cat years. And she has a hyperextended front extremity. And so she actually walks on the bone mm-hmm. above the wrist. So when she walks, I can hear her. It's... Yeah, it's just that it and it sounds because it's, like it's little hook, it's like cause it's like little kitty legs. Yeah. It sounds like somebody actually walking like a human. Yeah. Walking because if you think about it, the time that it takes her, mm-hmm. it sounds like a human and I'm like, I know that's my cat. Yeah. I know that's my cat in the middle of the night. She's so coming to kill you. It's, but I hear her constantly. I'll be sitting on the couch watching TV or whatever and I'll hear tonk 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 and i'm like oh. open your eyes and she's standing there with a <laughs> she's knife she's like there i will kill you <laughs> like, no um, i mean it's sad just but it's cutting butter i'm gonna miss that Sorry. i'm gonna miss that sound eventually yeah i don't know anyways i, I no sad stuff yeah i've had enough dead yeah. kids. I, I don't want to do we don't want to talk about that <laughs> Uh, hopefully she'll be around longer than well i say longer than me but then again <laughs> no all right <laughs> Here we go. Let's do this thing. What thing? The the tasting of the jerky. Now, oh, we're moving on. So now, uh, if you don't know, so I think most people listening to podcasts know that uh, Sherry and I both are vegetarians. Um, I'm a pescatarian. You're a pescatarian. And Actually, so are you. I just this year uh, started doing Now that. you have to label yourself differently. I don't, but I, I, I should. Yeah, I know. Um, but so you, like... If you don't know, one of the best sources for vegetarian food is an Adventist grocery store. Yes. So Seventh-day Adventist uh, vegetarianism is sort of a part of, it, it's a large part of their philosophy, I guess. Not necessarily not everybody their follows religion, it. No, their not everybody philosophy. follows yeah, it, yeah. but for health reasons. Mm-hmm. And because it is a popular, a lot of uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventists are vegetarian, and their grocery stores... So when we when we lived in College Dale, which is where a university Adventist university, the biggest is, one, I think the 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 Adventist store there, the grocery store, the vegetarian market, maybe the best I've ever yeah encountered. absolutely because you could walk into it and it was like a full grocery store, but yeah. you knew full well yeah. that anything you took off those shelves had zero meat right. in it. So you you could you could shop at e- at leisure. Yeah, you know, and there was a they had a bakery that had a deli. Yep, they they would have like. Uh, meat spreads and it's fake meat but right. like you could buy ham spread they had reuben sandwiches turkey yeah the reuben sandwiches are fantastic on rye marble yeah. rye i mean it was a it was a reuben sandwich so whenever we go to chattanooga i always try to go there and get the reuben sandwich yeah my wife loves them too um but they'll have they have a bacon egg sandwich and just everything it's just a really good to yeah do. yeah and so uh there's an avenue store here in um Atlanta, and I, and I, sorry to report, it's not as good as the one in Chattanooga. Do they have like a deli section? They don't have a deli section. It's just on the shelf stuff? Yeah, you okay. can get the stuff in cans, and, and they do have a freezer with some stuff. But, so, um, I bought the most recent jerky, vegetarian jerky, I bought at that place. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's what I expected. It, it's... A little kind of meaty tasting, a little bit chewy. But it's it's soft. Kind of teriyaki. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we don't like that. I mean, it's okay. It's what I expect. You know, you you uh, you you know when you're getting meat substitutes, it's not going to taste exactly like the actual thing. Right. Uh, the the exception would be the Impossible Burger, which I think is probably the closest that very anybody's close to, to meat. Yeah. Yes. Um. So okay. So I've had several of these. Um, you already opened them? Yeah, I did just now. 
Oh, okay. just a second. Uh, oh. I mean, I mean, I've had several of this in the past. It, in the past, okay. yeah. What I'm going to suggest is that you start here because it it run the 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 okay. You know how meat has like a texture that okay. you eat it one way and mm-hmm. it doesn't chew so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, eat it that way because that's <laughs> okay. how it shreds. So best. it has a grain. Yes, that's what I was. Uh, going and for. so we should point out that this is classic. No, this is cracked black pepper flavor. Yes. Now my favorite. So I jerky might get ever. a little choked up on this because I might get pepper in my throat and then i won't be able to talk it's 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 a little bit peppery it smells good it's very good it says low in fat so it actually smells beefy yeah i didn't expect that uh low in cholesterol good source of protein 100 percent plant-based ingredients and what does it say vegan and vegetarian friendly and uh snacks that's okay. that's who they are all right so i'm gonna so, try it again it's by unisoy and it is i love black pepper jerky that's always been my favorite mm-hmm. Um, I don't, you know, I'm okay with the teriyaki once in a while, but it's a little sweet for me. And then that hot and spicy stuff, I, yeah. I can't eat too much of that. What do you think? Okay, initially, when I put it in my mouth, it tastes like a piece of felt. I mean, it's like c- cardboard. It's really, really tough. But that's what meat, meat jerky is. It's yeah. tough. You're just not used to it. I was, it's been so long since I've had meat jerky, it's hard for me to even uh, compare it. It's so so I can only compare it to like recent vegetarian jerkies I've had. And what's your thoughts? <clears throat> Still chewing. <laughs> it's very chewy. Um. So my biggest gripe about vegetarian jerky is it's too sweet. Mm-hmm. It usually has a lot of sugar or honey or teriyaki sauce or whatever right. that I don't feel like like a lot of of um, meat jerky is smoky. It's like bacon. It's mm-hmm. just I mean it doesn't even need the sugar. It's mm-hmm. but the there's smokiness. sugar in it too. A lot of times, yeah. Um, and of course the meat jerky usually lasts longer. So one of my favorite things about jerky was always that when you would eat it. You could be eating it two hours later. You it, could put it in your mouth. It turns into chewing and just gum. Chew on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The gristle, yeah. the fat, yeah. and it sort of turns to that chewing gum. And it's just, I liked that. Some people might not. Right, right. You don't get that in vegetarian jerky. You can't. It's so not possible. it's gone quicker. Yes. Um, but that pepper flavor in mm-hmm. your mouth, man, that sticks around. Yeah. So I do like the flavor of this. Uh, the last jerky that I had kind of crumbled. Mm hmm. It didn't last as long. This didn't last really long, but it, it still was good. And plus, I was trying to hurry up and eat it so I could talk. Right. Um, I might make it last a little longer um, later. But uh, I do like the flavor of it. It is kind of peppery. I could taste that pepper. Not too much. It, sti- it lingers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wish t- I would love for it to back off the sugar, the sweetness a little bit. It is ever so slightly too mm-hmm. sweet i would more smoky i would like yeah meaty and smoky maybe they need that sugar but it's still uh, quite addictive because i tell you i'm sitting at my yeah, desk e- i would eat a bag of this yeah sure i'm sitting at my desk i got a bag in front of me mm-hmm. and i'm like oh okay now the pepper's overwhelming you have two or three pieces mm-hmm. and that pepper that you're feeling now just intensifies yeah. and you're like okay too much black pepper i'm just gonna put it back and then like 10 minutes later you're like okay i might have another piece yeah that's good i mean <laughs> um for vegetarian Jerky, yeah, not bad. It's pretty good. Sure, it's a little bit expensive, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I looked for it on on many different uh, venues. I looked for it on Amazon. Uh-huh. I looked for it um, just in general, like at their site. I looked for it on another uh, vegetarian friendly site, and the one I found it being the cheapest was at veganessentials.com. Okay. And that's not a commercial. We don't get paid. No, it's not. We're not <laughs> sponsoring them at all. I'm just, I'm just are. letting you know. But it's still. <laughs> Over six dollars a bag. Okay. And it's only three and a half ounces. Yeah. So it is expensive. Well, yeah, but that's true about almost All any vegetarian. Vegan food. and vegetarian, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. All right. So I have a friend and she doesn't listen to the podcast, and um I'm still not gonna mention her name, but she's probably uh she's younger than me, I know. Yeah. Um how young, I don't know. But, I mean, aren't um, most people? She's like I would Sorry. say she's <laughs> I'm going to say five to ten years younger. Well, that would be me. me. Well, you're 12 years younger. Oh, that's right. 
My wife is sometimes. 10 years I younger. I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I would say in within 10. So she's, so, she's somewhere between us. Yeah, I feel like she's in between my wife and myself's age. But I don't know, honestly. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember how old she is, and it's none of my business. But she's close to the same age. Okay. Let's just say she's middle-aged. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a couple years ago, she now this person, uh, she's very smart. She's been involved in... Uh, uh, politics and real estate. I don't know what a regular job is, but um, a couple years ago, she just decided, I'm going to medical school. Wow. And this, again, remember. I've read stories about this. You're talking about my age. Yeah, yeah. She just decided, I'm going to medical school. Yeah. She went to medical school all the way through school. She graduated, I don't remember if it's this year or last year, uh, top of her class. I mean, she's very smart. And um, and now I think this year she's doing her internship. Wow. So at a time when so many people I know that are my age are retiring, she's starting a brand new career. Yep. She's doing, she's becoming a doctor. It's crazy. Uh, isn't it though? I mean, just to be, to want to continue to work and not only that, but if you're going to be a doctor, you're, you're going to have, you're looking you would, at at least 12 years not, of school. You're not getting into this to retire after two years. No, 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 so You're no, going to no. do it a while. You want to do this till you die. Yeah. Especially if you're, let's say, you're not paying out of pocket and you have to take out loans to actually go to school. Yeah. Those loans will never be paid off. Not by you. I guess, but I just think, I, I'm not even thinking about the money, monetary part of it. Just the commitment, the time commitment, and then the career, starting a new career. And... Okay, so I kind of did that this year. Started a brand new career. Yeah, in well, a way, it's a it I, it didn't re- involve the schooling and all that. It's just kind of a stuff. new manifestation of a career that you've had your entire life. Totally. I mean, it's art based and everything, but it's also like I you know a gallery owner. You're a business owner. Yeah, but I you've mean, been a business owner before. Yeah, but I'm just saying, not a gallery owner. I mean, I, I tried to start a gallery in the past, but it's it's just a totally different career. But. I started thinking about that, and I just think it's very interesting. And then I think, what is it? Because, well, I'll go down this path in a few minutes. But if you could just completely start over now, yeah. first of all, would you? And what would you do? I, I'll tell you what I would do. And then, But if you're going to tell me what you do, then you have to tell me why you're not doing it. Because <laughs> I can't afford it. Okay, so it's money for you. Yes. Um, I couldn't even afford the schooling right now. I couldn't You'd afford. You'd be surprised though at how much you could get with like grants and loans and help and things. If True. You haven't then, checked into it. But then here's where I'm at. Okay. Okay. So so what I want to get into takes a a lot of schooling, and it's what I wanted to get into as a teenager, and mm-hmm. I just never did. And there were a lot of factors there, and I'm not going to go into those because life happens, right? We're people. Yeah. We live lives. Um. So. The thing that I would want to get into would take at least 12 years of school. I am 40. I'm a, yes, I'm 47 years old. Sorry, I had to do math. It was hard. Um, I'm 47 years old now. So 12 years, we're looking at 59 by the time I'm out My of age. the actual school. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't intend to be dead or anywhere near it by then, just like you aren't. Um, <laughs> but you're starting in a new career. Yeah. At your age, which you're doing now, Mm -hmm. which I would be starting today and end up at by the time I'm your age. But that doesn't mean that I would be making the money that I would need to not only support myself, but pay off my loans at the same time. Yeah. Um, What I would get into is forensic pathology, which means I would need a medical. I would need I would need a I would need an MD. I would have to be an MD to start with. Right. So that's. A lot of schooling, plus a residence, plus, you know, all of that. But but I'm just saying, here's somebody who's older than you that just became a doctor. Exactly. Went through all that same stuff, so she did it. Yeah, she did it. And I've also, back in, in my 20s, mm-hmm. I watched a thing about a guy who was 60. Yeah. And started. That's almost my age. School. <laughs> to be a doctor. Yeah. And ended up being an emergency room physician. I just... I, Could you imagine at 72 years old, mm. be starting your actual career after your schooling, after your residency, after all of that, now you're in charge and you're in the emergency room. Yeah. And I you can. have to make 
these yeah. decisions. I just here's what I I've I'm learning as I get older, and we've talked about this a little bit on the show, but just the more I get older, it's just like nothing in this world counts other than just enjoying what you're doing. Nothing counts. Yeah, money doesn't yeah. if you get it if you don't whatever it doesn't really matter it works itself out you're not going to have it when you die no i mean you're not going to have a lot of stuff when you die <laughs> you're not going to have, have anything when you die. <laughs> nothing but, that you have here <laughs> but the thing is it's just like the what is what is the 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 gift what is the most important thing what is the the um the treasure in life and it's just experience great experience wonderful happy experience being happy enjoying the experiences that you have and whatever that is that gives you those, it doesn't matter. That how could how could you put a price on that? You're right, and you just you just do it. And even if you can't get a medical thing, it's like is there something that's comparable to that that you could do that you could get the same amount of enjoyment out of? Possibly. I mean, when you consider <laughs> forensic pathology, uh, there's also the possibility of going into veterinary forensic pathology but i've thought about that i have because that would require less schooling um and and i've actually given it some some thought because because for the last 20 years i've yeah. actually considered just dropping everything and doing it well. um and it's fear that's stopping me well but 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 for the most part i can't do the veterinary forensic pathology because that would hurt my soul more yeah than doing human forensic pathology, which mm -hmm. I know sounds harsh, but it's true. Um, it's easier for me to see a human dead body than it is a, a, a animal dead body. That might go away when you're in schooling, though. I don't possible, know. possibly. Like if I if I could look at it more academically mm -hmm. um, and more um, in the sense that you know possibly I'm helping future yeah. animals. Maybe, but I just don't foresee that. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question that's along these same lines, but a little different. Okay. What is it that you can do that you haven't done that you will do? Oh, God. How the hell should I know what I'm going to do? I mean, is there you don't have a plan. It's just like, oh, no, no one day I'm going to do this. I guarantee you I'm going to do no, it. No, I don't have that. Really? Really. I've never had that. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see the future in that way. I don't know that eventually I'm going to do anything. Well, no one knows. You can't predict the future, but I'm just saying, do you not have a goal like that? So so I was thinking about this, and this is, I mean, I was thinking about this today, and I know you're going to think this is cheesy because I was just watching this video and stuff, and I've, ta I've been talking no, it's about fine. it. But, it's, fine. but it's, it, it's something I've wanted to do my entire life, and I've never done it because it's not my field. It's not my study. I don't have a lot of, practical know-how in it uh -huh. that doesn't mean i can't do it or right. gain that but right. right now i just don't but i just thought well, okay so what i want to do and i like doing what i'm doing i don't want to change careers at all but it's just like what would i want to do and i just thought something i've always wanted to do that i've never done that i need to start doing is i want to write a really really good song okay i i don't know enough about music now I can play some music, mm -hmm. but I've never constructed a song. I've never learned enough. Like my instrument when I was playing was trombone. Most yeah. people don't write a song on a trombone. Round a trombone, yeah, but trombone. Like I, and I took guitar in school. I took piano in school. I couldn't play a note of a piano <laughs> now. I'm actually better at piano than anything. I could, I could get around on a guitar, but it's been so long since I've tried. But I just think... Why can't, what if I picked up a guitar and I learned, I concentrated for one year, learned enough guitar that I could write a good song and then start writing a song. And then I could, that's something I could say I did. I could go, I did that. I wanted to do it and I did it. I picked up a guitar. I learned enough about writing a song and I, I, I cause I love to write poetry and I made a kick-ass song and now when I die, whoever can have this song, they can play it forever if they it's want. It's not it. like a monetary thing. It's just like I just want to. Do oh this. no, I don't. If I made money, fine, but that wouldn't be why right. I was doing it. Right. So just to say, I wrote this awesome song. I can help you there. 
I can. Well, why don't you just do your own? Because it's not, it's, it's different. Um, but I know an amazing guitar teacher yeah. uh, who will also teach you how to read and write music. Okay. And, you know. I, I know how to read music. Okay, great. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. um, but And I know a lot of guitar chords. So I mean, all, you I, need, I, all you would need is a little kick in the ass then. It, I need to practice. Yeah. So it's just like so lessons would help you practice. So this and this is a tangent, but I'm going to say uh, so this hurt hurt me really bad the other day when I really so like this little guy over here in the corner, no one else can see it, but my big upright bass that I love Which so is much, beautiful. And I was thinking th this past week, I was just like, if there's anything that I could go back like in my like teens or twenties and do different, master the stand up I would, bass. I would master. I didn't even know it existed really as an instrument. Yeah. And the first time I put it in my hand, which was about six years ago, I was just like, this is me. This is... I, well, you, you match it in height. So, I just, yeah. <laughs> I, I loved playing it more than anything I ever yep. have played. And I've watched you play it and your face just kind of goes, oh, I just yeah. love it. But, but I'm at a point now where I'm just like, I'm not going to do anything with it. I can't. I'm not going to be in a band. I don't have the time to put into it. I'm just not. It's one of those things that I'm going, to, at my age, I'm going to have to say goodbye to. No, you don't. Tell you why. Right now. Listen to me. We both have a friend who makes music, who plays several of the instruments in his songs. So why is it while you're writing your song using your guitar, you can't implement that as well? Well, it's just, I'm sure, I can pull it out and play it once every year. But I'm just saying I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be in a band probably I'm not gonna do thing and I'm now I'm starting an art gallery I got things to do I'm just not gonna do it it's one of those things I gotta go uh, somebody could use this more than me no don't give and it I up. have please don't give it up I please have don't to give put it away, it away. please so don't. so so that's something that I've just recently started thinking okay it's just gonna have to be that but like writing a song I can take my guitar to the gallery in my studio when I'm sitting there all day long and I could I could play it. I can work on it. Mm -hmm. I can get better at it. And then I can write a song. You can compose it. Yeah. Now are you going to is it is it in your in your thought process or in your dream that after you compose this song that you are also the person who records it? No. Oh, no. okay. I'm not saying I wouldn't record a demo of it, but I'm just saying I'm not. I'm not a performer. I'm not a, certainly not a singer. No. Uh, I could do a de write it in a demo. I could be okay. Sure. But it's just like I I've been studying wonderful, fantastic songs, and I just think I want to do one. I just want I I don't I'm not gonna have a career in it. I'm too old. I I, I don't really care. But it's just like I want to be able to say like I want to be experience a fulfillment in that i don't want to write a shitty song but i <laughs> Nobody want to be wants to write a shitty song. i just want to be able to write a song that somebody goes wow and then everybody in the world records it <laughs> and then and then you're done yeah i don't i just i don't you know. want to be it's a one-hit wonder no i don't i just want to i mean that's what it would be yeah but as a songwriter i wouldn't be performing i just want to do it i don't know i feel like that it's it's a goal now because I used to have a goal. I used to want to be in a band. I used to want yeah, to. Yeah. I used to want to be. A, You've mentioned that singer in a band, lead yep, singer yep. in a band, but I let that go for a lot of reasons. And now, obviously, I'm too old to do that. I mean, in, an incarnation somehow I could do it, but I'm just not. I'm not going to do it. So mm -hmm. I, I accept that. Um, but this is something that I could potentially do, and still, because I've always wanted to, and I could. I don't have to close that up. I don't have to put a lid you on that. You don't have to. It's I a just creative it. process no. and a creative venture that Might you can write do. Write two good songs. And it wouldn't cost you a goddamn thing. You <laughs> it just doesn't. do it. No, you it costs nothing but time. Nothing but time and effort. Yeah. And and I'll tell you what, that it's the same thing with my piano lessons. I was taking piano lessons um, prior to moving uh, to the southeast. Um, and I was getting pretty darn good. I was uh, able to read music and play what I read. And without, you know, being told what keys to hit while I read the music, I don't know that I could actually write music. I guess if I got better at the reading and the playing, maybe I could do the writing. Um, but I will tell you what, it's been 12 years mm -hmm. since I've read any music. Now, I still have all my books and I still have all my music uh, on a bookshelf somewhere. Um, I don't have a piano, 
But I think that if I sat back down at a piano, I might actually pick it back up with the proper uh, teacher. Yeah. Whether that teacher is human or in, in book form or on YouTube or whatever. Um, I, I would love to be able to do that. And I think that if a guitar person and a piano person were both able to read music and play music, we might actually be able to write something. Maybe. I don't, you know, I'm not, I, I don't. I had, especially when I first got my bass, and I still, in the back of my head, I got this band that I want to do. <laughs> but It's not going to happen, but it's still there. It, it, it was a band that I just knew would be successful at Renaissance fairs and things like that. And I still, in the back of my head, I think it could do it. But I'm just not. I, I don't have time. It's just it's Well, you, you don't want to stand out in the sun every weekend sure for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a distraction. So uh, I don't know that that'll ever happen. But I do think that I can pick up my guitar and do stuff. But anyway, we need to move on. Sorry. We have some days of the week oh, that yes. um, we need to chat about because we don't want to leave people um, in the middle of just not knowing what is going to happen this week. Plus, Rick wants to eat more jerky. So, I'm jerking it out. Well, oh, wait, what? You're doing what? Jerking. Oh, you're, <laughs> don't I'm do jerking that. Don't, jerky. don't do that in front of me. Hmm. Okay, so I'm assuming that Monday <laughs> is the 6th. Is that correct? Yes, it so. is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, guess what? That's uh, Labor, Labor Day. Day yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope everybody has a fun and safe Labor Day. Don't drink and drive. Everybody goes into labor tomorrow. Not me. God no. Anyway, or today I should say the podcast. Comes yeah, out podcast today. comes out today. today. Yeah. Uh, okay. So obviously it's Labor Day, but yeah. I'm not going to do that because I said I wasn't going to mention national holidays like that that but everybody you knows. Did, so. um, it is National Read a Book Day. Oh, I'll read a book. Sure. Do you know what I did a few weeks back? Read a book? It was actually, I'm going to say a few months ago. Mm -hmm. I took a weekend. It was a three-day weekend. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it might have been Memorial Day weekend. I don't remember. But I, so there's this place I love to order a cleanse from, like a juice cleanse. Oh, it's called, <laughs> okay. It's called Pressed Juicery in right. California. Mm -hmm. And they ship to you, and they ship obviously in refrigerated because it's it's not it's perishable. Okay. Um, but you get all these good juices and everything. And so I cut out all screens. I cut out all <laughs> uh, alcohol. I cut out all food. And all I did was do this juice cleanse. And I cut, since I cut out all screens, that include TV. And I didn't listen to the radio. I didn't do anything. I didn't get on the computer, nothing. So she I had read. A, a visual cleanse as well. Yes. I did a cleanse, cleanse. And I did a people cleanse too. I didn't speak to anybody. Oh. Um, and I read a book and a half over three days. What was the book you read? Uh, <laughs> How to cleanse yourself? <laughs> no. Porn? There's actually, porn, wasn't it? No. You, you actually read porn. They're actually books that, the kind of books that I like to read. Now, I love a good novel if it if it engages me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great. I'm not big into self-help books unless they're super short. Mm -hmm. um, or I or I can read them in, in tidbits. But what I did is I read books that I've actually already read. Um, but they're very, they're just facts. It's just facts. Okay. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Because that Trivia is books. what, yeah, sure. that's what feeds my brain. And the first one was called Final Exits. Oh, Mary Roach? No, no. Oh, I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Somebody got you that for Christmas. Somebody did. Um, and so I read Final Exits. Yeah. And uh, then the next book that I started on was um, uh, 10 Ways to Something a Corpse. <laughs> oh, you can get put in jail for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of those ways can get you put in jail, yeah. But I think it was 10 ways to dispose of a corpse. Okay. So you're not doing anything to the corpse other than disposing of it. All right. Uh, but again, it was just all these facts that are great facts. And these are older books, mind you. Like the facts that are in these books are outdated at this point. But it was still fun to learn because there's historical knowledge in there and I love history. Anyways, that's what I did. So, so read a book. Read on a book. Read a book day. Read a book. It's just fun. It even doesn't if, have to be like a but even if it's Danielle Steele novel or something. It could be a Kindle book, right? You could read a Kindle book. It doesn't well, yeah. have to be paper. It doesn't have to be, I love well, paper books. Sure. Me too. But if you like electric books. I'm just saying read a dang book. Just read a book. Anyways, Tuesday. Let's go to Tuesday. Tuesday. Guess what Tuesday is? It's the day of twos. No. It oh. is National Beer Lovers Day. Oh, wow. Didn't we just have that a few weeks ago? I don't know. I feel like we did. Uh, we probably had a, some sort of a beer day. Beer day. day. You know, like beer day. But I'm beer not lovers. a beer lover. I'm not a beer lover. I am a beer lover. I'm going to tell you, know you straight up I don't love beer. I love the way beer smells. 
probably more than the than way, the way it, tastes. it tastes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or the what it does to your gut. Mm. I just I have a hard problem with beer. Okay, so you're not going to as be I take a drink. No, um, it is also National Salami Day. Now right, you and I, <laughs> you and I are vegetarian, like we were just talking about. Right. And I used to love salami uh-huh. and there's n- there there's there's no good vegetarian salami you, it's not possible i've never had a good vegetarian salami yeah i don't think uh, they'll say it's salami but it doesn't actually taste like it, it. it doesn't it tastes like soy that has some spices in it i can just remember the thing i always remember about salami when i was a kid was uh popeye the popeye cartoons um and uh, it was probably racist now that i think about it let's not discuss it then there there was like uh, a bunch of um uh stereotypical race racial people in front of a uh, like a uh, now i can't think maybe like a god or something and they were worshiping it this and is on were, popeye yeah and they were what? going and they were going salami salami baloney that was the little the thing that they uh, uh, they chanted that sounds very um, by the sailor man and and it was oof, all yeah oof. <laughs> let's move on shall we salami salami baloney let's talk Two about wednesday <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's very reminiscent of the south park uh uh j-lo episode where it's taco taco burrito burrito well this isn't a, i mean i'm just saying that these the the characters in the cartoon were if i as i recall stereotypical racial cartoons but yeah. what they were saying was that they were it was like they were they were Making chanting up. in front of a uh, some sort of a god or That's something so weird <laughs> just remember that from popeye when Don't i was a you, kid did, but did you like salami when you were younger oh uh, i didn't get a lot of it Not in your i household. don't remember liking it because it had little pepper yep. stuff in it and i yep. didn't care for it that much oh okay. but i think i do i probably would you like would like it, it today, older, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. for sure. So Wednesday is National Ampersand Day. Okay. So if you say the word ampersand to mm-hmm. somebody who's, I don't know, 12 or 13, mm-hmm. they don't know what you're talking about. Well, some of them don't. Some of them do. Maybe. And it was probably the same situation with our generation, too. I We wouldn't have known what that was. When ampersand I was? use it a lot. Do you use, do you use it a lot? I do. Mm-hmm. And I also use the Oxford comma. Okay. I never use the Oxford comma. Why? I Who gives a fuck about an Oxford comma? <laughs> I do. Damn it. <laughs> you don't know there what that means, There has to be a comma. No, I don't. No, it, uh, just, There are a few people out there who know what it means. Did I miss something? <laughs> it's not unusual if I did. That's the song. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, Thursday is um, National Wiener Schnitzel Day. Wiener Schnitzel um, I saw some of that on a menu, but I've never had any, obviously, because of the unless it has vegetarian wieners in it. Probably. Well, it's not wieners at all. Yeah. Wiener, actually. It's a wiener schnitzel. Wiener schnitzel. Okay, that's great. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm uh, largely German, and I can't speak it. You are not at all German. <laughs> no, I am. I'm. Oh, I guess you are. German, yeah, yeah, Baldwin comes from Germany. No. Oh. Clap. Clap. Your other side of the family. Yes. Okay. Sorry. With the clops. Totally, originally. totally out of the connection there. But yeah. So Wiener Schnitzel is a uh, pounded down piece of something that's breaded and, and fried. Okay. Not your, mm-hmm. not you. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, there actually used to be a fast food chain in the, on the West Coast, maybe over here, I don't know, mm-hmm. called Wiener Schnitzel. Okay. And we used to go there. A lot but we got hot dogs <laughs> they didn't pound your wiener <laughs> no they had they had wiener schnitzel if you uh-huh. wanted it okay they also had donuts and hot dogs and uh, things like that and we would get hot dogs because we were kids and sure we didn't know any better nobody when you didn't want them to schnitzel your wiener but if you haven't had a wiener schnitzel in a while yeah do it okay it's yummy um thursday for uh, no we're moving on hold on was that thursday, thursday or wednesday, wednesday, thursday. I thought it was that wednesday. was thursday oh we're moving on to right Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Th- yes, we're moving on to Friday. Friday. <laughs> okay. It's not a big day. Oh, really? No, really? it's not. Friday's not a big day. Okay. It's uh, it's actually a very sad day. Uh oh. It's National TV Dinner Day. <laughs> well, I just saw a documentary about TV dinners. Did you? Yeah, it's on very Netflix. Interesting. Yeah, my wife and I talked about what we had when we were kids and and the TV dinners and things and just how they changed and all that. Did you? Did your family get the Hungry Man TV dinner? See, I, I didn't. Like when I was growing up, we didn't have it that much. But just 
we, we were poor. Yeah. So we didn't get much of anything. Yeah. But I started, well, like when I became a bachelor on my own, mm-hmm. I would get, I would order TV dinners more. And I liked them okay. I always get the fried chicken TV dinner. Um, and the, but the mashed potatoes always, everything kind of tasted nasty. Well, it was but all it was fake. just so quick. Yeah. You just pop it in. Super quick. Yeah. So the ones I, I really remember. Underst- I don't really understood, stand the charm of them. No, the ones I remember had the, like the fried chicken, the mashed potatoes, Mm -hmm. and then you got some corn and then you got that apple thing. That was nasty. It was It's all gross. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But today you can actually find some good microwave meals. Well, they say that, but I don't know. I'm not convinced. I haven't had not. I mean, they're not great. It's not like homemade food, but you know, if you don't. You're eating history, literally. Yeah. You're eating history. You're eating history. It's a piece of history. And Hungry Man still exists. Is this chicken or history? Hungry Man still exists. I know. It's so weird. Well, this documentary I was watching was like the battle of like Swanson. Oh, and, yeah. And what was the other one? Uh, 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 Banquet. Or Banquet. Mm. And then, uh, was it Swanson? Yeah. Yeah, there were, it was interesting. That's I, I will check that out. Okay. Uh, okay, so Saturday is the 11th, September 11th. Okay, Keeley's birthday. 9-11. Yeah. So. Keely was born. She let's just, turns eight. Let's just remember that, first of all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Second of all, it's also National Make Your Bed Day. Oh, I, I, I don't do that enough. Make your bed. No. Get up in the morning. I like to make out on my bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't even like to do that. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. Sure I do. Get up. Take a shower. Make your bed, mm-hmm. get dressed, okay. do your shit. All right. Most importantly, make your bed. <laughs> do you do like crisp corners on the ends? I don't. I just said I don't. You don't make, make your bed. my bed much. <laughs> I don't make my bed often, but when I do, I make it well. Okay. All right. So Sunday is the twelfth, and Sunday is National Video Games Day. Oh, you would love that. I love games. Okay. Uh, electronic games, Mm -hmm. iPad games, iPhone games. I don't play a whole lot of video games, like what you would consider like having a console and then hooking it up into your TV. I remember when we first got together and you came here and you had a Wii. Uh, Yeah, I still have it. (laughs) You were like, I think you were like, this is going to be awesome. I have a person who's going to play Wii with me all the time. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. And you would come home and I was like, what is a Wii? (laughs) <laughs> you were like, I don't even want to stand up. There was something. <laughs> there was something on the game that I liked that we played a, a few times. There was some kind of weird thing. I don't. I don't know, it was a shooting gallery or something. I don't yes. remember what it was. Yes, there were several sporting games, and that was kind of fun. But it, I just, I'm, I'm not a game person, and then, so after a while, it just kind of disappeared. The problem with the Wii, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is it's a great idea. Because it makes you, or supposedly makes you stand up and play these games. No, I don't want to stand up. But you up. don't. You eventually, like within a day, you figure out how to lay on the couch and yeah. move your controller mm-hmm. to play tennis. You know, so there you are, getting your wrist workout, eating Cheetos mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, it, it, it is a flop. Anyways, yeah. So, National Video Games Day. For those of you that love video games, spend Sunday playing video games. Okay. Um, it's also National Just one human family day just one so we're all one big family exactly oh that's so liberal shut up (laughs) (laughs) i mean maybe we're all big hippies now huh i grew i went to school in a hippie school leave me alone yeah we are all one big human family we're all human nothing wrong with being humans with humans all right so that's a week is that cool we're done (laughs) you're done yes (laughs) we're done uh, all right, let me ask you a question. So, uh, dreaming. You have dreams. You're having dreams. Always. Um, so, well, do you go through patterns? I think you, like, sometimes your dreams, sometimes you don't remember your dreams. So, like, do you do that or just, like, always remember your dreams? I, I okay, yes. Yes and no. <laughs> I don't <laughs> all know of what the you're things. answering to, but anyway. <laughs> sometimes, like, I'll go through periods where I just, like, we dream a lot and I remember my dreams, and then other times I just don't remember anything and I don't know what it is. But here's what I've discovered. Uh, recently so i will dream uh, this is just the way i i, I sleep now is I, I will sleep all through the night and then i wake up maybe two or three uh-huh. and um i'm just awake so i grab my phone and i don't 
do that. I get on my phone and I do some social media. Stop just doing bored. that. And then I find a new ASMR video or whatever, and I'll listen. And then I fall asleep and go back to sleep. Sometimes it happens at four. Sometimes it happens at five. And occasionally, rarely, it'll happen at six. But the ones that happen at like four or five, I'll go to sleep, and I get the deepest sleep. And I, but those dreams that I have right after that are the weirdest dreams. All the, do you find that the more your morning dreams are weirder? They're they're yes, yes and no. They're, they're I, I want to know would, if there's I, anybody's done research on that. I don't want to say they're weirder. I want to say they can be more diverse. Okay. And I also want to say that they are more uh, uh, vivid and vibrant, okay, but not yeah. necessarily weirder. Like because I have some weird dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Mine are the weirdest dreams I have come in the morning. I think. Okay. So this morning I dreamed that Mila Kunis was in my pants. <laughs> now, here's the weird... That's not the weird part. What did Ashton think about that? No, well, okay. So in my dream, she and I both were in relationships. I, I was married. She was married. And it, this was not sexual. But she was in... Like, she was physically in your pocket, in your pants. It, the, her entire body, she was like wrapped around my legs, my <laughs> the whole body in my pants, and I'm I was laying down, and she was in there, and she's like rubbing my legs, and we're having a conversation through she's, my pants, I guess. She's in your pants, yeah, and but it it isn't sexual. Now I remember, so it's like she was relaxing, and I will I will say a lot of people come to my house to relax in my pants <laughs> so don't. she's not the only one i don't one. i don't <laughs> she's not the only one but she's like in my pants and she and she's rubbing my legs and we're just chatting and she's just like and so i'm starting at after a while i mean it's it's completely platonic but after yeah a while, yeah it sounds like it yeah but after a while i'm starting to think this could go somewhere and i can remember thinking hmm well we're both we we were both in relationships. We shouldn't let this go anywhere. <laughs> it's too late. She's in my pants. But anyway. <laughs> and so I just remember at one point I Like remember, her whole body is in your pants. Totally. Her whole complete <laughs> body in my pants. I don't know how big she was. She's a small person. Or how large my pants were. But anyway, <laughs> she was in there. And I, and two, like first of all, we're not even friends. Mm -mm. And so even if we knew each other, I don't think we're at the get in my pants stage. <laughs> no. um, but I just, I can't, I don't think too many people would be very relaxed in my pants. I wouldn't. I know what's in my pants. <laughs> and I would say it's not that relaxing, but I just feel get like. Get out. <clears throat> yeah. I just feel like, so I can remember in the dream. And so at one point I was just like, wait a minute. I think this might actually go somewhere. Oh, okay. This might actually turn. It's not sexual, but it might turn into something. Oh, okay. And then I was like, should I? I? We're both in relationships. I don't think we, I don't think this is something that should happen. But I do remember at one point I was just like, okay, I'm just going to let this happen. If this is going to happen. And I think she was like giving some signals that she wanted. She thought that maybe it was going to happen. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't know. She must've seen something down there. She liked <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was. But she was kind of like thinking. I mean, I think it was just one of those things that we're both uh, we're kind of moving towards maybe. Oh. And Ooh, something. Wink, wink. Oh, I stood up. With her in your pants. Yes. And I walked to across the room. I had to get something. And I came back. And when I did, I completely, the whole atmosphere was blown. And that was, apparently was the only thing that got blown. Uh, not you. No. And after that, it was just like nothing she she came out of my pants i believe and she was just like okay that's she was she upset was, that you got up and like, walked no, away no she wasn't upset she was just like she was done she was like oh okay that's good we're done so you didn't get to have an, a, a nocturnal no, no, ejaculation nothing happened um nothing sexual happened it, it actually starting out it was like friends we were in no it, it she wasn't was just even chilling out in your yeah pants. it was nowhere close to being sexual <laughs> <laughs> so she has been in my pants before because <laughs> that wow. is nowhere close to being sexual. I can't even. And and that happened. And that ha that was my dream this morning. So I would say that's kind of weird. Don't you think? That's um, a little weird. Let me try and be professional here. Um, yes. 
<clears throat> that is weird. Would you like to interpret my dream? No, I would not <laughs> I feel, like to interpret your dream. So I, I, I haven't put, spent a whole lot of time with it, but I feel like as I'm getting older, I'm having a lot of dreams of younger, extremely attractive women yep. that I have a very platonic relationships with. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm not getting any in my dreams from these women. Like when I was younger, I'd be... I'd be banging them all the time, man. You'd be ball deep in oh, Mila. Oh yeah, ball deep in Mila. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I'm older, I don't. I don't have the sex. No. So she, she I just want to keep them in my pants. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> well, you used to always say all these cute girls. You wanted to pick them up and put them in your pocket. Just want... You wanted to pick them up it's and like, put them oh, in your pocket. Oh, she's so cute. I want to carry them. But I meant my my shirt pocket sure, I'm talking yeah. about my pants uh, but this wasn't my pants pocket this was my pants in your pants I, I've never had a dream where somebody's just in my pants before so I, I don't know but wow I, have I a, mean actually someone in my dream got in my pants and but it wasn't sexual explain that I, I mean I can't I can't either I'm sorry all right I just want to shut down this podcast okay, okay. let's just close it down I, I, I need to go finish this dream <laughs> I'm afraid I'll go back to sleep and I'll check my pants and Ashton Kutcher will be in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't need that. Or, 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 uh, uh, Vilmer. Oh, no. <laughs> he might be in your pants, As long too. as it's not Dane Masterson, I'll be all right. <laughs> well, you'll be safe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a tragedy. All it right. It is. I'm so sorry. Let's, let's change the subject. Okay. Um, let's talk about the beer real quick. Yeah. So we're having Oktoberfest by Jungling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a seasonal beer. Mm -hmm. It's they say it's a classic, classic, Mar Marzen Marzen. Which we're not Mar sure what it There's is. There's no D in it. Sorry, Marzen style. And I, I, it's not on our periodic table of no, beers. No, we don't know what that so is. So I don't know what that is. Anyways, it's it's, it's beer. It's classic. Whatever it is. It's a beer. What do you think of it? Do you like it? It's okay. Uh, I finished mine. I, I finished early. this beer earlier than I normally have finished beer mm -hmm. in the show. Mm -hmm. It's very smooth drink. I gotta say, it's uh, it's not. It would go well with food. Yeah, it's it's not loaded down with a lot of heavy flavors. Uh, I don't even know. I don't maybe, understand the Oktoberfest. Yeah, me part. either. I, I, it doesn't I was, have any Oktoberfest flavors. To maybe me. some slight kind of cinnamony it, it's a little season but it's so light i just i don't even think that it's worth talking about i mean I wouldn't, just, yeah this just tastes like a normal yingling to it's, me yeah it, and and that i don't know maybe the color or something made me think pumpkin or something i don't know but by the time i got to the end of it it, it was clear it's just like this is a regular drink it's just a regular, regular beer be which is not bad it's I not a bad it. beer right right thirst it's not quenching a bad beer. yeah thirst quenching for sure much better than last week's yeah because yeah. you didn't like last week's Although you drank them all, a bloody beer though that was the thing about last week. All See, right, so what, are you, gonna, what, what do you think? What are you going to do? What are you going to give? Are you going to give it a number? I'm going to give it a three. I'm going to give it a two. All right, you're giving it a two. I'm giving it a three because I liked it. So I liked it. All right. All right. Then. So I'm looking at our record here. The last three beers I've rated a three. <laughs> you're just getting average at this point. I, Everything no, average is average. Is be two point five. Three oh, everything is, is above average. A little average. bit above average. Okay, then. That was a good one. All right. All right. So let's stop. Um, we, I do want to mention that we do have a Halloween uh, yes. event coming up. And uh, please, please, pl hey, please. We don't have time to write all these stories. We write, need help. Write some stories. Let us know if you're going to write a story. Help. We want to read your story. We're going to read it live. We're going to have an audience. And please don't embarrass us. Don't leave it. Don't, we got to tell people yeah. that we have a podcast that no one listens no to. No one listens or participates. We have a podcast that no one sends our stories to. Mm -mm. Please just don't embarrass us. Don't let us know. We're often embarrassed on our own. We don't need additional embarrassment. Uh, I would say, though, <laughs> if you're going to be in the neighborhood, we would love to have you to come and listen. Even if you don't write a story, that's fine. You can come and just hang out and sit around and listen to the stories. Um, we're going to really, we kind of know when the date is, but once we really solidify what date it is, we'll start announcing it here. And that that's going to happen in a week or two. So. It has to. It has yeah. to. Yeah. Because we're looking at, what, the next three, wait, what is it? What is today? Okay, so it's September. Yeah. So we're looking at like less than less a month. Than a month. Mm -hmm. Less than a month. Yeah, so we need uh, we need your stories in. Uh, deadline will be the 1st of October. Yes. The theme Which is... Which is less than three weeks away, people. The theme is the art of the dead. So uh, any kind of zombie story, anybody, anything coming back from the dead uh, is, a, is a great thing. Mm -hmm. And that's the theme this year. So please help please us. Help us. Um, let us know if you're going to do it. Send us an uh, email at thisepicdisaster at gmail.com. 
Um, you can also just send us regular stuff there. That's fine. We, we'll, we'll read it. Tell us know. what you think about Mila Kunis in Rick Baldwin's pants. Uh, maybe you would like to be in my pants as well. <laughs> <laughs> Or don't you want to be it. in Mila Kunis's pants. Do that. So I don't know, but I'm just saying, uh, I, apparently there's openings in my pants because <laughs> she's no longer in there. So there's space available is what you're saying. We're on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, and uh, Facebook is probably where we are most of the time. Yeah. But we're also on Instagram. Twitter. And um, we have a Twitter page, which we, we try to do, touch. but it's not always there. Nope. And um, that's that's our story. That's what we that's do. That's our social media. You know what I did this week? What? I signed up for LinkedIn. I hate LinkedIn more than anything. Oh I think it's the most invasive social media, but I had to do it because I'm now a business owner. So if you're out there and you're on LinkedIn, Did you connect with me, me on LinkedIn? I didn't know you had a page. It didn't show up. Here's what I don't understand about LinkedIn. And and all of them are kind of like this, but LinkedIn is the most invasive. So it's very I, invasive. Totally. I ignore it almost completely. I signed up for an email that I've never used on it or anywhere else, and all of a sudden, uh, just just for me signing up on there, it's showing me all these people that I know. How does it know that I know those people? Because it's, it's, because it checked into things without my permission is yes, how it knows. Exactly. I don't like that. No. But I have to do it because I'm a business owner. And anyway, anytime, out there, anytime you look at somebody else on LinkedIn, yeah. all those people will now see yours. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's it's so invasive. Uh, but if you want to uh, completely uh, be friends with me on LinkedIn, which I don't know if you're a friend, business partner or whatever. There you go. Um, just look me up and you can do it's that. It's networking. Yeah, Quote, unquote, networking. Mm hmm uh, that's it. That's all. I don't have anything else to talk about. I'm out. I, don't even, I think I've talked about too much already. I have grilled tuna downstairs. Okay, then we'll go get some. Okay. Uh, people, thank you so much for listening to us uh, and for listening to us all of this time. You know, we're almost at... 200. Two, episode 200. Today's episode 190. Yes. Uh, episode 200, and we're going to start doing some a uh, little bit of fine-tuning after that. Uh, but but I just we're coming up on our anniversary. What is it? Three, four year, four year anniversary. Fours. Maybe? Yeah. Um, Fours. And for those who've been kind of hanging out with us for all this time uh, and listening to the nonsense, we do appreciate you. Some of you have been listening to it since the Life in the Kill podcast. Mm. Wow. Um, but we do appreciate it. We love hearing from you. Please drop us a line, this epic disaster at gmail.com and tell us that you're still hanging out with us. And thank you for being our friends. Yeah. Um, and tell your friends. Uh, it, that helps us. It, it does. does. It's the only compensation we get <laughs> all right let's go all right all right we'll see you next monday bye, bye. This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast.